everybody, this is Birch. And with Joe Q leaving Marvel, it starts to raise some questions about what do we think the future of comic publishers, particularly the big ones, what do we think it's going to be? So I've been predicting for a while, and I think that the uh, pandemic largely just paused a lot of things. Of course, DC has been wound up in this AT&T discovery and all that kind of mess. Uh, but overall, if, you're, if you close your eyes and try and forecast into the future what happens with these big companies, you know, where, where do you get to? Um, and I think the, uh, you know, the, the, the reality is this, and both companies are sitting on top of billion dollar properties. So not, not small, not insubstantial, but massive, massive properties, uh, at the comic companies called characters and IP that are worth billions of dollars, both companies. So regardless of what you think about the DC universe, uh, you know, and how the movies have gone and everything else. It's still a billion dollar franchise between Batman, Superman, Justice League, Suicide Squad, all these characters. It's, uh, it's a part of our life. And if you think about the superhero genre ultimately starting to fade from popularity, it's still going to be a while. It's not going to go off of a cliff. You know, you just had Peacemaker, the series, do quite well, get renewed for a second season. You had the Batman movie come out, do quite well. They're certainly going to do more of those or at least look to expand. You've got, uh, you know, Doctor Strange made you know, good money. Spider-Man made good money over there for Sony. Uh, there's no slowing down. I think Thor uh, Love and Thunder is going to make just an insane amount of money. That's my belief. I think that it's it's going to hit all the notes of what MCU fans tend to like to see. You know, some new characters, some comedy. It's, like, it's, it's going to be, you know, feels like a big thing. I think Christian Bale will do a good job as, as Gore coming up with a relatively sinister villain who's going to do some sneaky stuff. I don't know, or maybe turns out like Ronan, who knows. But in general, I think that what you've got is um, you've got several years before this thing's going to die down. So given that, Marvel and DC are not going to roll over and just, you know, stop publishing comics and, and everything else. It would it raise too many questions. With all this money being generated by this IP, with all this attention that's going on, you know, how can you not do more with it? How can you not make more progress with where things are at? Um, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I think there, there's at least some thought of, to what do we do exactly with this comic book business? We're sitting on top of you know, huge properties, lots of money, uh, but the comic book business continues to struggle. And I mean, you can only use the excuse of like, well, people don't want to buy printed floppies anymore so long before people go, yeah, okay, but what do, pe what do people like to buy? You know, we've got these characters that sell tons of money in T-shirts and toys and movies and everything else. What is the what is the comic equivalent? What is the graphic novel equivalent? What what we can't be beaten by these Japanese cartoons. Like what what is the plan here? Maybe it looks radically different. Maybe it's maybe it's digital based. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But it's got to be stronger than this. So I think if, if I'm predicting again, looking at where things at, Joe Q leaving, we had Dan Didio leave two years ago, plus. Um, question marks as to how long Jim Lee is going to float around there. I mean, he's a little bit different. He's positioned as kind of a figurehead. But in many ways, he's analogous to Joe Q. And I think the likelihood that he keeps going in his rate. I mean, the difference is I think Joe Q views his career as still having some, you know, some millions in it, that he can still make some good money off of, you know, what he's done and his name and everything else. I think he, he views it, he's still got a good 10 years of being able to do some big things. I think Jim Lee's in a different spot, where I think Jim Lee's made probably more money. I, not probably, he's definitely made more money. And I think Jim Lee's looking at it of, you know, not, not retirement exactly, just, you know, what, what I, don't, I don't sense the same hunger to go out and do a small company or do his own books or to become a producer things. I don't, I don't sense that same excitement out of Jim Lee to do that. I, I sense an excitement from Jim Lee to kind of continue to be a, almost a Stan Lee type figurehead and, you know, take that for as long as the money is there. Yeah, it's too cruel, but that's, that's how I, that's how I see him anyway. That's how I, that's how he appears. So I think that what you'll see out of Marvel in particular, like I mentioned elsewhere, is a bit of a cleaning of the house. I think they're going to go through, and I think several of the other senior executives are going to vanish. I think anyone who believes they've got a route into doing something more is going to go. I think that uh, you will definitely see that transformation take place. I think you're going to see it become a lot more corporate aligned. I think you're going to see you know, very much the mechanics of how Disney press operates. I think they'll continue to make comics, but less of them. I think the floppies will 
ultimately start to decrease. And I think they will do more graphic novels that they can put on the shelves in Walmart and Target and places like that, Barnes and Noble. I think you'll see more of an effort to do original work there and try and tap into that. I think you'll see at least more of an interest in licensing, meaning like, hey, you know, do we have a company, not IDW, who's got some cash that wants to go out and license some of these characters and do new things with them? I think in general, the big two have to be looking and saying, you know, is there a different, a radically different format that we want to do that we think, you know, doesn't make the same kind of money, but maybe makes more sense as a portfolio product for us? Maybe that's, uh, you know, we're going to put out something that is a, you know, I don't, I don't know, a, a graphic novel once a quarter for each one of these properties. And we try and make a million sales on them. Is that, is that, I just think you're going to see people try and beat the business a different way and not do it, not do it how they have been. I think you're going to see a steering into that direction. I don't think it's going to be fast, but I think over the next five years or so, you will see, you know, the comic companies heading that way. Again, I think that the floppies are not going to die. I definitely do not think so, but I, I would be shocked if five years from now, they're still putting out 80 to 90 floppy comics a month. I don't think that holds. I think you're going to get down to the core and that's, that's what you'll get. I think that if you're somebody who's really liked some of the experiments, some of the, you know, like, Hey, let's give Hellcat a comic for a couple months. I think those days are going to quickly come to an end. I think the stuff that they're going to print and publish are going to be the stuff that directly aligns to, you know, either giant characters that have a following right now, like the X-Men do or Spider-Man or so on. Um, or you're going to see, yeah, maybe you'll see some digital efforts, I guess, but it's either got to align to the movies or it's got to align to characters that are already huge. Is She-Hulk coming out? You're definitely going to get a She-Hulk comic. Is uh, Hellcat got a series come out? She doesn't? All right, then get, you know, no, she's not getting a series. I think you're going to start to see stuff like that. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at, over, at, again, at DC. You'll see, I think you'll see the DC and Marvel start to operate very, very similar as companies. I think that when Discovery and that, that whole thing goes through, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, desire to align uh, what those two are all about. But overall, I think that uh, it's it's going to be an interesting time. I think that Marvel and DC are going to start to feel and behave even more different from Image and the Indies. I think you're, you're going to see a, a vast shift uh, between what the big two are doing, how they align to their corporate interests, versus the indie companies will really try to be carrying the torch for small comics. Now, the, the curious part is if, and it's a big if, Marvel and DC do go that route, start to almost deprioritize floppies a little bit, do more for the big box stores, kind of go in that direction. Will that be you know, helpful or harmful to comics? Are you going to see uh, more or less uh, strength in the comic book market if Marvel and DC you know, basically move away from it a little bit or at least deprioritize it. I think the easy answer, what people would like to hear is, hey, this is going to help out the indies. They're going to have more breathing room. They're going to be able to, you know, get more stuff done and they're going to be able to, you know, they'll be able to do more. But I think more likely it's going to be the opposite. I think it's going to hurt them. I think that if you have that volume that's disappeared, I think it's, uh, I think that that, that potentially makes the direct market a much more dodgy place to go. Now, a lot of them moved away from new comics already. That's fine. But I, I think that uh, I'm not as positive that these changes from Marvel and DC result in good news for the indies. But we'll see. Anyway, what do you think? Speculate on below. It's always part of the fun. And thanks for listening.